<clears throat> broadly there are two kinds of people in the world some people are wise and some are otherwise <laughs> <laughs> so the Bhagavad Gita is a guidebook which can help people to change from otherwise to wise and <clears throat> the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita begins with a universal question that universal question is what are we meant to do in life what are we to do Arjun Ask Krishna a defining question. Pruchami tvam dharma sammudha chetaha. Dharma sammudha chetaha. I do not know what I am to do. Dharma refers not just to some religious codes, but dharma refers to the right thing to do. Now all of us have certain paths set for our life. Say if we are students, then okay, we pass this grade and then go to the next grade and next grade. That's the path set for us. If we have a job, okay, this is how our life gets oriented around the job. If we have a family, then our responsibilities are accordingly set for us. So normally, when we are going by one road, we don't think too much about which turn to take, as long as the road is straight. But once we come to an intersection, Hey, should I go here or should I go there? So that's the time when confusion comes up. So similarly for us, sometimes life brings us to intersection points. Where should I do this or should I do that? Just We just don't know. And things can become very confusing at that time. Now, what should we do? That depends on, okay, so what should I do depends on who I think I am. So that means that suppose say somebody is a judge in a court and then they normally Subject, uh, there are cases which come before them, the accused is brought in front of them, the plaintiff complainant comes and a judge hears the case. Now imagine if a situation is there where the judge's own son is there as an accused. Now at that time, what should the judge do? The judge knows in advance this case, the evidence is very strong against my son. Now, if the judge identifies oneself primarily as a judge, then the judge will say that, no, I am a judge, I have to do my duty. I have to punish somebody who is a wrongdoer. But if the judge identifies as a father, so he says, my son, how can I, how can I send him to jail? I have to do what it takes to protect. So then in that time, of course, practically speaking, the judge would have to recuse. They will, they will be told, you cannot judge a case like this because there is a conflict of interests. But if there were no alternative, then what the judge would do depend on, depends on who do we think we are. So the judge identifies with being a judge more than being with a father. The judge will say, no, let the person be punished. The judge identifies more with being a father than being a judge. Then the judge will... I say, uh, then, then they will say that I'll get my father, the son, off the hook somehow or the other. So basically, at the start of the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna faces a similar conflict. There are different kinds of conflicts when we come to an intersection point. Say, for example, today you came for a program. Now, some of you had the option to do something else, but you chose to come for the program. So whether to come for not, or that was a it is a decision, it is an intersection and you choose in a particular way. Now that could depend on your interest, that could depend on your, your plan for what you want to do in your, how you want to grow in your life and you felt maybe this could help you learn something. So you, there is, we all have certain basis on which we make some decisions. And usually if we put a little bit of thought, we can arrive at an intelligent decision. 
but there are some situations which become very complex where there is like in this case it's a ethical tension ethical tension means there are two courses of action and neither of them is clearly right or clearly wrong so at that time what do we do so arjuna had two duties pulling him he had his kula dharma and he had his kshatriya dharma his kshatriya dharma told him that you are a martial guardian of society therefore you have a duty to punish the wrong doers whoever may be the wrong doers even if they are your relatives even if they are your elders but his kula dharma he is a part of a dynasty the kuru dynasty the kula dharma made him feel how can i attack my how can i cause the destruction of my own dynasty that's not to be done whatever i gain by that is it worth it so his by his reasoning he comes to the conclusion initially that he's not worth it but then he thinks okay if i don't fight i don't i won't kill my loved ones but here also my loved ones are there they will have to suffer either they will be killed because the opponents are bent on war or will be disgraced and we will have to live in poverty in the forest and these rulers are unjust and they will do much more atro atrocities if they have no one to challenge them so at this point his question is what is dharma so two dharmas are pulling him to different directions he has come to an intersection and he asks what should i do prachami tvam dharma sammudha chetaha and now krishna's answer so this is a universal question the specifics of some battle that happened 5000 years ago may not seem relevant for us but the bhagavad gita has been found relevant by millions for millennia because the question it addresses is has very little to do with the specific historical context the question it addresses is universal so we could say the first section is there is a confusion about duty and to get to resolve the confusion about duty the first thing krishna does is clarification of identity that is it what we should do is determined by who we are now we can have various levels of identity say for example we might say that i am a male or a female i am i am an indian i am an american mm. i am a south indian i am a north american whatever so if we consider our identities we could frame them in different contexts if we, we connect with our parents we say this is my surname this is my name so now krishna so these are we have various uh, what we could say functional identities functional identity means in terms of the function that we do in life so i might say i'm a i'm a software engineer that's my functional identity somebody might say i'm a mother that's my functional identity now the same person who says i'm a mother or a father and before they had a child they were not a mother or father so based on a function we might get an identity hmm. similarly we can say that based on the kind of body that we have which country which i'm a short person i'm a tall person we have various identities so krishna says that below or found underlying all these functional identities is our fundamental identity and at the level of functional identities there can be confusion einstein said that problems can't be solved at the same level of consciousness that created them so arjuna's confusion was one level of functional identity is i am a kuru nandana my uh, i am a member of the kuru dynasty another level of functional identity is i am a kshatriya i am meant to fight against aggressors so both are at the same level of consciousness because in both cases he is identifying with his external physical situation so krishna says below these two functional identities there is a fundamental identity and that fundamental identity remains unchanging no matter how many functional identities change we might say i am a indian but we might get american citizen we become american we might 
be we might be a prof software professional you might decide to become a professor so we can change so many things i was in canada i met one person the person has changed his or her whatever his or her gender six times till now <laughs> there are people who change the gender but six times they changed not this 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 so now so we can change so many things about ourselves but beyond all this there is a fundamental identity which remains the same and that identity is at the spiritual level this comes from a fundamental level of i-ness that i who is the i who says i am an indian i am an american so, so we can see that the externals keep changing our roles in society keep changing our self conceptions according to the role keep changing but below that the self remains the same and that self is the soul the soul or atma in the, the bhagavad gita says that is who we essentially are and krishna says if you understand yourself as the soul that is where your growth in knowledge begins and then what happens if you understand we are the souls and basically we go deeper into our own identification 